Hello, my name is Megan Varner and I am a health coach and physical therapist who helps individuals with POTS and chronic fatigue learn how to thrive again in their lives. I'm very passionate about this population because I myself have been living with POTS and chronic fatigue um, in conjunction with a connective tissue disorder called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome over the last decade. And I'm happy to say that there is a process that you um, can master to improve your energy and get back to enjoying your day-to-day -day life. Remember, all of the information I share is for informational purposes only and does not substitute for medical treatment and to please run by any of my suggestions with your current medical team before implementing them. So this video's topic is about HRV. What is it and why does it matter with POTS? Well, HRV stands for heart rate variability. It's a measurement of time between consecutive heartbeats. It's measured in milliseconds. Um, in research, you would use an ECG tracing and measure the time between consecutive R waves, or really the tallest peak on that ECG tracing, um, in your heartbeat. And there are all different um, statistical analysis of this. Um, there's SDNN, there's SDNN index, um, there's RMSSD. Um, typically, what is more available to consumers um, is the RMSSD and we measure it a little bit differently than putting leads on you as that would not really be doable um, in everyone's day-to-day -day life. Um, we get the information through light that picks up your pulse and converts your pulse into what's called IBI data or interbeat interval data that comes up with um, the measurement for your heart rate variability. There's all different types of devices out there. Um, they have different sampling rates and a different quality of data. What I typically suggest to clients is to find one that's within their budget and we can consider um, what data it's giving us and really look at the trends in it. So what's so great about heart rate variability is probably what you really would like to know and POTS. Well, heart rate variability is a measure of your neurocardiac function or what the communication between your heart and your brain is doing. There's a brain, you could say, even within your heart that is very much interconnected to what's going on in the rest of your body. Um, but there's a lot of integration that goes on going up your spinal cord to your brain and then from your brain through your spinal cord back down to your heart. Um, the really cool thing about heart rate variability is that it reflects what's going on in our autonomic nervous system. And in those of us with POTS, um, we have a dysfunction in our autonomic nervous system that's having trouble regulating autonomic processes like our heart rate, um, our pupillary reflex. I definitely have times where my pupils are not um, constricting or dilating properly, our digestion, our blood pressure, our temperature control, um, and it can even reflect over into our emotional regulation um, and how well we're able to um, manage the stressors that come to us, whether they be physical or mental um, or emotional in nature. So when this system is not working very well, we can definitely feel it in our symptoms, but we can actually also see it in our HRV. HRV is a reflection um, of really how well the side of our autonomic nervous system that helps us shift into a digest, repair, a resilience mode, as I like to call it. Um, and in POTS, we don't tend to be able to turn that side of the autonomic nervous system on as well or engage something that's called the vagal break. Um, we tend to get stuck in what's called the sympathetic side, um, where we're in kind of this fight, flight, and burning through our energy with a higher heart rate, um, difficulty digesting our food, difficulty regulating um, body temperature. Um, it is in, which can lead to all of um, the symptoms of POTS, notably the orthostatic intolerance. Um, that is a very simplified explanation of the autonomic nervous system and what can be going on in POTS. Um, there's a lot of um, imbalance that's occurring throughout the nervous system. Some also say that it can just be a lack of homeo the ability to attain homeostasis. But anyway, all of that said, um, HRV is really a good measurement of how well we're able to recover um, and recharge ourselves. And 
um, when we look at our HRV trends over time, we can determine how well our nervous system is able to shift into that. And it's really easy to measure now, thanks to all of the wearable devices that I mentioned before. Um, lower HRV is actually associated with quite a bit of other chronic conditions I would like to mention. Um, especially um, some of those that are involved, that have inflammation involved, um, but others as well. So it can, it's also been found to be associated with um, post-COVID or long haul, depending on what, what you want to call it, um, diabetes, depression, adrenal insufficiency, metabolic syndrome, cancer, cardiovascular disease, um, and even PTSD. Um, and that's just a sampling of some of the things that it can be associated with. Um, all of that said, um, just because your HRV is low does not mean that you are stuck there. I see HRV um, as being a measure of resilience um, and something that's changeable and very powerful when we start to understand what impacts it. Um, there's quite a few things that can impact it. There's a lot of research out there in the general population, um, but I thought I'd share some of the ones that definitely impact the those of us that are managing um, POTS and chronic fatigue on a daily basis. You gotta consider what your stress level is. Um, when stress goes up, HRV goes down, which makes sense because that means that we're shifting into that sympathetic fight flight side of our nervous system and the side that's helping us rest, digest, repair, and become resilient is not able to kick on as well. So considering what your stress levels are and how you can reduce, reduce them can be a very simple first step in beginning to improve your HRV. Um, another big piece, especially important for those of us with POTS and chronic fatigue, is what we are doing with our exercise levels. Um, exercise is a very important piece for health. It's important for improving your HRV, but it can also negatively impact your HRV. And it, HRV, um, to say it again, can help you figure out how well your body is tolerating the amount of exercise that you are currently doing. Um, this was huge for me on my journey as I could never really figure out exactly how much exercise my body could tolerate. That may sound kind of odd coming from someone that is also a physical therapist, but I just couldn't figure out why, no matter what I did, I either crashed and burned or was fine sometimes. What was going on? HRV gave me this really amazing insight in, as a tool to figure out, oh, that was too much. Um, and again, looking at the trends can be huge with this. Um, when anyone over exercises on that note, it's actually used quite a bit in um, sports performance, your HRV can drop. So that can maybe be something you can pass on as a tip to a family member over the next couple of weeks. Another huge thing that impacts everybody, but especially those um, of us that have a condition um, in which we have low energy is sleep. If we are not getting enough quantity of sleep, or good quality of sleep, our HRV can decrease. Now there's lots of things that can affect our sleep and this is something that I really get into the details with with clients um, because it is a big piece of being able to rebuild our energy. And usually I'd say 99% of the time it involves um, working with other healthcare providers to help figure out what things um, that can be added, subtracted, changed, um, that can really improve that quality of sleep. So another one that I've actually talked about before on another video is thinking about your intake. This means food and fluids. Um, HRV, um, along with heart rate, is a good measurement of how well you're hydrated, um, including those electrolytes for those of us with POTS, because again, when we're not getting the fuel and the fluid included under that, that our body needs to thrive, our nervous system's gonna start sounding those alarm bells and those alarm bells sounding means we're shifting into that sympathetic stress state. So when we start giving ourselves the food that agrees with our body, that agrees with our nervous system and the amount of fluid and electrolytes that we need, you can begin to see improvements in HRV, thereby improvements in your energy level and your autonomic nervous system function as well and having fewer symptoms. Um, one diet does not fit all. I often get asked like which one is the best to help improve my HRV and it's really something that 
typically some objective guidance. Um, I have an interactive food journal that I use in a secure app with clients um, to help tease through this and looking at HRV that I'll use and kind of looking at do we need to improve their gut health because guess what? Your gut health can also impact your HRV. I could do a whole video just on that, um, but if you're having gut dysfunction, you can definitely have issues with your HRV. Your enteric nervous system, your gut, is actually a branch of your autonomic nervous system. So when that's not doing so hot, um, the other branches can be affected, meaning the parasympathetic, sympathetic, um, or your rest and digest, fight or flight, can start to get imbalanced and you can start to see changes in your HRV. Um, it's also important to think about what um, drain you have just on your body and your mind as a whole day to day. Um, it can be a good exercise to kind of list what is stressing you out and what is helping you recharge and really see if that one side of the list is matching the other side of the list. And if those stressors are overwhelming, what is helping you recharge? You might need to take a step back and start to restructure what your day looks like, what your week looks like, what your priorities look like, because um, that can be a huge, huge piece of what's going on with your HRV and what's going on with your energy. So I hope that this video on HRV and how it relates to POTS has given you some insights and some hope. Um, and remember, if your HRV is low, uh, it, it varies from person to person. There are age-matched norms, but um, really it's, a, it's all about where you are um, and figuring out how you can improve it because you definitely can. Um, it can take some guidance, and if you're interested, I'm happy to talk to you about how I work with clients and helping them um, tap into the power of their HRV and improving it so that they can get their autonomic nervous system into a state of rest, digest, and repair, and build up their resilience to get their energy back and start thriving again. Drop a comment below the video if you're interested or you're welcome to email me at megan.barner at guidetoresilience.com.